So some n****s have been on record saying Ash Ketchum got some Mickey Mouse rings. It's me! I'm <laughs> So I've decided to take the liberty of peeping each of his Kanto gym battles to decide on a performance rating from 1 to 10 and whether he deserved his wins or if they were a little... Starting with... I'll use my trusty frying pan as a drying pan! Brock, Brock, Brock. Ash's first gym battle was painfully piss poor. Before he pulls up to the gym, he meets a mysterious man named Flint, who sells rocks for a living. He basically tells him that there's no damn way in the deepest depths of hell he gonna be brought, especially with that little electric rat and his weak ass thundershock. Ash tells him to kick rocks, <laughs> and decides to challenge Brock anyways. He walks in, and there he is, posted, before he knew how to smile, straight mean mugging. They get straight into it with Onyx versus Pikachu. Look how Pikachu moves, bruh. At the sight of Onyx, bro runs back to Ash and tries to set out a different Pokemon himself. Man, if you don't quit bullshit and get ready to battle, Brock then gets Onyx to bind Pikachu and he starts to squeeze the fuck out of him. I knew Ash was in complete shambles when his ass tried to return Pikachu's Pokeball. Bro, you know, he knows, we know. He don't do that shit, bruh. Yeah. Did you? Not only does he do that, but to try and get out of the bind, he just spams Thundershocks. Yeah, you're out league, buddy. This shit is so sad that Ash actually surrenders. Possibly the most Shambolic debut a trainer could have to their journey. Flint catches Ash outside the gym and takes him home to comfort him about his loss because Ash is convinced he'll never beat Brock or get his badges. He then questions, if Brock is this nice at battling, how the fuck is bro not in the league trying to get his own badges? Flint's then like, hey, let me show you, and brings Ash outside Brock's crib where he's seen taking care of his 10 little siblings. Ash is like, well, where's his parents? His mom passed away when he was young and his deadbeat ass dad decided to leave to sell rocks for a living. Damn, what a sad story. Alright bro, here we go. I don't know if I got it in me to snatch his badge now. Ain't you just said you'd never beat him? Well that's before you showed me he was a vulnerable little bitch. Flint then offers to help supercharge Pikachu's electrical ability using a generator, which they end up going through with. Can't lie, this seems closer to doping than training, cause if this gets electric attacks to hurt ground types, that shit is not natural bro, get him tested. Ash pulls up again and the 2v2 match starts with Pidgeotto vs Geodude. Pidgeotto being a flying type just gets clapped by the type mismatch, basically forcing Pikachu to beat two Pokemon. We get to see Pikachu's new power against Geodude and yeah bro, this is dope. What the fuck man, this burnt ass muscly ball sack, hell nah, yuck! Brock's a little shook, but he sends out Onyx and now we get the rematch for the badge. Pikachu just starts tweaking in fear and starts sending electrical shocks everywhere. Brock binds him again and Ash, and Ash, and Ash does fucking nothing! He does fucking nothing! Your sidekick is getting choked out by a rock stick and you don't got the courage to command a move?! Shit got so sad that Brock called out the battle and said he feels bad for hurting Ash's Pokemon. He's calling you a bitch, bro. And do you know how Ash responds to this? One of his straight thunderbolts from his reckless ass move earlier hit a sprinkler and it started spraying all over the gym, including Onyx. Not only is he damaging the gym, but he used that water to take advantage of Brock's mercy and thundershock that damp Onyx, leaving him hurt on the ground. As Ash is about to deliver the final blow, Brock's siblings jump in in the last second to stop him, and Ash feels bad for using the sprinklers and forfeits. I ain't gonna lie, I'd commend him, but don't these swirly eyes mean the Pokemon's fainted? Cause by that logic, bro already lost. But hey, Ash somewhat nobly leaves the gym, technically two losses to Brock. As Ash is leaving, Brock catches up to him and decides to give him a sympathy bag, and asks Ash to live out his dream of traveling and becoming the greatest Pokemon breed ever. As he's about to bid him farewell, who else but Flint pulls up and reveals himself to have been Brock's dad the whole time? Who would have thought? He says he's ready to return into his family to let Brock pursue his adventures with Ash. I ain't gonna lie, bro could have been did this, like, uh, uh, whatever. Overall, Ash should really get a 0 out of 10, but since he got the realest side character a dude could ask for, I'm gonna give him plus 1. Shit was still Mickey Mouse though. We gonna add a bit to Mickey every single time some BS happens and see if we can build him all the way up by the last gym. So the next gym is located at Cerulean City and for some suspicious reason, Missy tried to convince everyone not to go. After some back and forth, Ash was eventually like, you know what, Misty? Sure. Really? Hell nah! <laughs> and decides to go anyways. Once they arrive to the city, they find a crime scene where a store was robbed overnight for a massive hose and vacuum. Sounds like some free shit to me, just saying. They also realize that Misty somehow disappeared along the way. Ash tries to get info about the gym from Brock, but Brock said he ain't snitching on a fellow gym leader, then leaves to handle his own business. Ash rolls up to the gym to find the gym leaders are actually a trio of divers called the Sensational Sisters. Damn Pikachu, you looking ready to take a dive yourself? Mesmerized ass! Ash catches Catches the sisters in the hallway after their performance and challenged them to a battle. You will not believe what they said. Um, we kinda don't want a battle, huh? Why? Some brown haired hunk from Pallet Town just swept through us so bad that all our Pokemon are like totally tired. Well, except for this one. I ain't battling a damn Goldeen. Well, aren't you a little pesky? Fine then, here you go. And Ash was about to take it for the free 
Whiskey! Bro! Luckily, someone stops this absolute piss take, and that someone is Misty, who reveals herself as the Cerulean gym leader as well. Turns out Misty is the fourth ugly duckling type of sister, and she left the gym to follow her own path as a trainer. I'm like, oh, that's so touching, but unfortunately for Misty, she ain't gonna get her moment, because this is a water gym with a pool. So one Thunderbolt and Pikachu finna make light work of this. If he agreed to battle, this little rat refused to battle just because it was Misty. Man, Pikachu, if you don't stop being a bitch and light this damn pool up. Ash resorts to using Butterfree and Misty chooses Stardew. They have some pretty underwhelming battling with some tackles and water guns before Ash starts spamming powder moves just for Stardew to keep washing it off. Whole time this is happening, Misty's sisters are just hating on the side. You think she got a chance? Bitch, fuck no. I don't know why she acting like she not feeling his ass either. See ya, see ya. <laughs> As the battle continues, they each switch to Pidgeotto and Starmie respectively, and Ash is gaining the upper hand. Who shows up but Team Rocket? They're here to suck up all the water to make the water types in the gym vulnerable to being caught. Can't lie, this is not the freak shit I had in mind, but this is still strange. But the only Pokemon they catch is not a water type, but Pikachu, who somehow let himself fall into the pool. Yo, this dumbass Pikachu has been a straight liability this whole time. But Ash said it's time to stop being useless and thunderbolt the whole gym, which he does, spoiling Team Rocket's plans. What does this mean for the battle, though? Does it get postponed? Rescheduled? Continued? No, he just gets the badge. What the fuck? Well, I think it's pretty obvious he could have won with Pikachu, but he didn't technically win. And not gonna lie, just for allowing himself to get bitched by Pikachu, he lost some aura. So I'm gonna give him a 4 out of 10, and we're gonna add Mickey's shoes. <laughs> Speaking of annoying electric rats, we then get Surge. Now Surge was something different. This man was such a crazy ass battler that when they went to the Pokemon Center to heal up before the battle, every patient in there was cause of Surge! And they all looked to be on the verge of death! It was so bad that when Pikachu saw a Pidgey get rolled in, he said, bruh, I ain't battling that nigga! Ash, you really wanna see me end up in the hospital, broski? After all we've been through look at how persistent he's being after some convincing they eventually get to the gym and there he is standing at seven foot nine the more fucking crimson chin lieutenant surge my next challenger's a cute one <laughs> yo unhand her he's told that ash is the real challenger he's like hey look at this little baby trainer right here with this little baby pikachu ah, 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 ah. ash is like hey why are you calling my pikachu a baby oh, i'll show you right now little baby boy <laughs> now this is what it looks like when you let your pikachu's balls drop a little bit <laughs> hello and he sends out a Raichu, and they got twin emotes. Talking about ain't no damn way you finna beat us. Pikachu gets fired up, but I'm sorry, their battle is just sad. Raichu tanks a Pikachu Thundershock, hits him with his own, and lays him out cool. Apparently he's not knocked, and he tries to go for more, but after a mega punch and a mega kick, he gets folded again. This shit was such a sad watch that Team Rocket from outside the gym can't even believe it. Hey, if the twerp's little rat is getting walloped, maybe we should catch Raichu instead. <laughs> Meow, that's right. Damn! Was it that bad? of a suggestion? Anyways, Pikachu gets sent straight to the hospital and bro's pride is hurting. At this point, Ash is given the opportunity to evolve Pikachu to Raichu with a Thunderstone to get stronger. Pikachu looks at it salivating like it's an Infinity Stone and he's Thanos, but eventually says, hey fuck that, I ain't evolving to no damn Raichu, that long tail, fake earring having, fat ass orange squirrel having a Raichu, fuck that, I'm the mascot of this bitch, I ain't switching up, how would you add more to my bag than that little ass Thundershock and maybe we can do some damage. <laughs> and that's what they did. In round two, the battle starts pretty grim again, heard you was talking shit about my tail, how how it feel then, huh? This long skinny ass tail. Oh, and you said I'm fat, huh? How fat? How fat? How fat? Holy. So it turns out Brock gave Ash a strategy of using Pikachu's speed and his ability to learn agility since Raichu can't learn it after evolving. Raichu counters the speed by just fucking up the whole gym with a massive thunderbolt. Somehow he dodged it by T-posing? That attack used up all of Raichu's juice, which gave Pikachu an opening to finish the job with quick attack. And boom, he got his badge. So, he did get caught the first time, but he had a sick strategy by using speed. Even though it was technically Brock's idea, Pikachu stood on business by not evolving, and victory wasn't handed to him. So for that, I'm gonna give him an 8 out of 10, and we're gonna leave Mickey untouched. I wish I could say the same about the next one because you're gonna have to strap in so the BS starts before they even get to the city Because as this group is lost a fucking creepy little girl just appears out of nowhere and runs away Causing Ash to follow her till he falls off a cliff and almost dies after some clutchness from Bulbasaur The gang finally sees Saffron City and head over as soon as they walk in two Absolute baddies welcome Ash with a smooch on the cheek for being the millionth visitors to Saffron City They tell them they've earned prizes and as they're bringing them over to where they can grab it they reveal themselves as being Team Rocket. Ah, Y'all thought they were bad. They then kidnap Pikachu as per usual, but this time someone comes to their rescue. 
She saves Pikachu and then teleports everyone right in front of Saffron City Gym. How convenient. Right before they enter, a mysterious running man warns them that there's no way in hell they finna win and then darts off. I'm like, the fuck is this drive-by dick riding? Anyways, Sabrina's gym turns out to be a training facility for psychics so that they can truly connect with psychic Pokemon. And this man here tells them they need to learn the art for challenging Sabrina. I says, man, fuck the bullshit, bro. I can bend a spoon too. <laughs> Now, where the fuck is Sabrina? They finally get ushered to the room, and the gym leader is revealed to be the little girl? She accepts Ash's challenge on the condition that the group agrees to play with them forever if Ash loses. I don't know what bro was thinking signing that fucking 360 deal like he's ever won a gym battle first try, but he accepts the conditions. As he does so, another girl is revealed and seems to have taken over for battling responsibilities. They begin the one-on-one -on -one trainer battle of Abra versus Pikachu, and Pikachu gets straight toyed with. Not only does Sabrina get Abra to dodge with teleport telepathically, but Sabrina straight in Instructs Abra to evolve! How do you just have that in your bag? Ash has the bright idea of thundershocking the whole arena so that Kadabra can't escape even with teleporting. Kadabra then psychically controls the thundershock, turns it into a dragon, and hits Pikachu with it. If you thought that was disrespectful, imagine the scenes where he's slamming him on the ceiling and floor. He even got him doing the name! Shit was so brutal that Ash actually surrendered. Did bro not remember the agreement? This isn't just regular spinelessness, it's brain dead! This little girl then goes, ha ha, time to play, and shrinks them to put them in her doll city. As the gang is panicking, inside she's straight giggling and then pulls up dribbling down the road like she's chris ball talking about i want to play catch and then balls the ball towards them this drastic ass situation and ash has the nerve to go we're gonna have a ball this ain't the damn time for jokes! Luckily, an unlikely savior in the form of the running man from earlier teleports in and gets them. Bro warned him again to just quit and starts playing with him just to show Ash there's levels to this shit. Turns out he's a psychic too. Ash is desperate as hell though, so he crawls and grovels towards the man, hoping for some advice. Pressed by Ash's grit and plain stupidity, he tells him that if he can get a ghost type from Lavender Town, it might just be enough to help him out. Which is exactly what he goes and does. After messing around in Lavender Tower, he finds the Pokemon equivalents of Ed, Ed, and Eddie, cackling and screaming watching prank videos. But are so unserious and even start trolling Ash once he finds them. Look what he does to Charmander! Whoa, bro! <laughs> After Ash knocks himself out trying to capture them, the ghost Pokemon snatched his soul. After chilling with them for a bit, Ash decides to just leave without catching any of them. Like he completely forgot the mission. He didn't take out the Pokeball once. Luckily, Haunter decides he fucks with Ash enough to follow him around. So boom, we got a ghost type, even though Ash didn't technically catch him, and they head back to the gym for the rematch. The little girl puts on the same rules on the table, and after she sounds a Kadabra, Ash sends out Haunter. Or at least he tries to, cause Haunter is gone. Nowhere to be found. He baited them. I knew you should have caught him. Ash tries to get one of his starters to help, but every single one of them bitched out. What is good with Ash's Pokemon? This man surrenders again and tries to escape. This time, Brock and Misty are turned into actual dolls. Not just shrunk, but actual dolls. Before the running man is able barely to rescue Ash, leaving Brock and Misty at the mercy of the scary girl. The man then shows an old family picture of Sabrina and explains that she was a psychic child prodigy whose powers became too much, eventually causing her to into Sabrina the cold hearted gym leader and Sabrina the playful powerful little girl. Ash then connects the dots and says, hey if you know so much about Sabrina and you have this family picture, you must be, yes, yes, I am her photographer. I'm done. This is all great but I'm thinking where the fuck is Haunter? And here he is playing too damn much damn near killing Team Rocket. Bro, not the time. After some pleading, he remembers the promise he made and agrees to help Ash. Ash returns for a third time where he finds Sabrina playing with Brock Doll and Misty Doll. Once again, Kadabra sent out and Haunter is not here hunters that nigga in the group chat bro unreliable unserious just here for banter and vibes but when it's time for action houdini fucking houdini luckily pikachu decided to grow a pair and battle for ash Kadabra is dusting him at first but pikachu lands the first bit of damage in the past three episodes but as quickly as my excitement rose sabrina dropped it off a fucking cliff Recover. I said honestly bro, being a doll don't even sound bad. No bills, no responsibilities, no thoughts, just chilling. Then, fashionably late, who pulls up but Haunter? Well Sabrina's like, hey, 2v1 ain't fair! But then the running man pulls up like, um, technically, Haunter isn't battling, so it's not against the rules. And I see the biggest load of bullshit I done ever seen. Haunter put on this weak ass clown show, making his eyes come out of his mouth and some other shit. And for the first time ever apparently, Sabrina actually laughs, which releases the two person curse or whatever. Wonderful. Love that for her. She's still winning that battle though. But since she's linked telepathically with Kadabra as we saw in the first battle, Kadabra is now laughing on the floor like he's at the damn Dave Chappelle show. And because of this, Kadabra is considered unable to battle and Ash wins, earning the March match and returning everyone back to normal. I 
can say wholeheartedly this was a 0 out of 10 performance. Didn't win, couldn't have won, surrendered twice, got his friends turned into dolls twice, took a comedy show from an uncaught Pokemon to win, and just overall, Mickey Mouse. We gotta add the shorts ladies and gentlemen. So that one was stinky, quite the opposite of the beautifully scented... So before his battle, Ash and them pull up to a perfume shop and Ash immediately offends everyone inside by calling Perfume a ripoff because it turns men to zombies. Shit, he ain't lying. He basically dissed the whole culture to the point where he was denied entry into Erica's gym because the gym doubles as the supplier for that perfume shop. So in a surprising twist of allegiance, Ash is forced to team up with Team Rocket to teach Ash the art of disguises. It's a win-win. Ash needs to sneak in to battle Erica and Team Rocket needs to sneak in to get the secret ingredient of the perfume so that they can make millions. After they get into the gym, where Erica's hosting a class, we get a quick backstory of Gloom using a stinky defense mechanism to save Erica from a grimer when she was young. Unprompted reveals Ash's disguise. Yo, I ain't gonna lie, like, woo! But Erica agrees to battle him anyways. It's a 3v3 battle beginning with Bulbasaur versus Tangle. Bulbasaur gets diffed pretty quickly and I'm like, brother, get that fucking Charmander out. It's lucky he listened, because that's exactly what he did. Charmander did his thing, because a quick flamethrower and skull bash dealt with the switch to the Erica then sends out Gloom, and I wish I was lying when I say this Gloom, without any instructions, just releases a putrid smell. Mind you, this is not a move, ladies and gentlemen. I repeat, this is not a move. But it one-shots Charmander! If you played the Gen 1 games or the remakes, you know a fire type means barbecue chicken at Erica's gym. To let your best option go out like that is crazy. As Ash is pondering how to somehow get a win here, Team Rocket come in from the rafters and just commit arson, lighting the whole grass gym on fire. Oh my god, look at this! Pikachu, this isn't the time for gardening! After everyone escapes, Erica reveals that Gloom is still stuck in there. Ash volunteers to go in to save Gloom. At first, Gloom is so scared that it releases the stench, but after seeing Ash's persistence to save it, stops the smell, and we all know what it means if Ash does an act of kindness to save the gym. A free gym badge. <sighs> yeah, not gonna lie, he didn't win, he might have won, but throwing Charmander to a non-move, this gets a 1 out of 10. I'm sorry. Mickey Mouse is shit as well, we gotta add the gloves. They'll be firefighter though. Next up is... Bro, this gym was just... <sighs> me, 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 fucking boring but here's the gist ash and them wander into a ninja lair with hella traps where they find this ninja warrior named aya she challenges ash to a battle and bulbasaur dogs on her before a smoke bomb appears revealing koga the gym leader who is aya's older brother after brock unsuccessfully asks for aya's hand in marriage simping ass ash challenges koga to a gym battle pidgeotto and venonat are sent out and venonat instantaneously evolves someone teach ash that method because he needs it pidgeotto then gets shit on and charmander is sent out next but before anything of meaning can happen who shows up but these motherfuckers Focus. Bro, not gonna lie, this shit is getting old. And I don't know how, but this just gotta be racist. Team Rocket do what they do best and execute a lame ass plan to steal all the Pokemon. And for some reason, we get some time dedicated to Psyduck's character development, where he saves the day finally after pissing Misty off for so long. Koga and Aya even start glazing, offering to trade their Venonats and Venomoths for it. Can't lie, I lost respect for them for that shit, bro. Ash and Koga run a quick one on one rematch of Charmander and Golbat. All it took was a couple flamethrowers, and bro was gone. And boom, that's the badge. Can't lie, he won fair and square. Technically, was losing the first time before it was interrupted but still fully won but damn koga was ass good win pretty unimpressive i'ma give him a seven and mickey gonna stay untouched can't lie i need a gym battle to like ignite something in me huh huh this one is way more interesting so unlike the previous gyms this one is located on an island cinnabar has been reduced from a trainer location to a tourist attraction so the gang struggles to find the gym in the first place and then in comes this hippie who seems to know a lot but only gives advice and riddles the gym stands alone banded and bare trapping and napping is what happens in this lair a bando misty what the fuck do you know about some bando misty and goddamn they ain't lying seems like the gym has been long retired saddened by the news later in the night everyone struggles to find somewhere to sleep since every place is booked with all these tourists they even find a hotel that gary rented out for himself and all his cheerleaders gary even taunts ash by saying hey if you spin around three times fast and say i'm a little bitch i might get a room for you and look at pikachu bruh ash is like pikachu if you don't lock the fuck in and have some damn shame ash then remembers that the hippie gave him a business card for his inn but that it was in a riddle form too look to the swing and he might be in shock my ends up above where the Wi-Fi get blocked. And boom, top of the mountain. Good shit, Misty. After being given a free stay at the inn, the hippie and the gang get a phone call that the Pokemon lab has been robbed. They pull up and Pikachu does what he does best and get these motherfuckers Team Rocket blasting off again. And as a reward for doing so, Blaine reveals that there's a secret gym for Ash to challenge. Hotter than the blocks is the spot for your next fight. Filled with more fluid than your bitch last night. Blaine's getting too comfortable with these riddles, bruh. They all ponder over the riddle while chilling in some hot springs. Then Togepi messing about slams on a Gyarados head, who 
which opens up a secret entrance. They go in to explore and they find a stadium! Yeah! Turns out the answer was Volcano. And who was waiting for them? But the hippie. Show me a granny to turn me to a eater. All along, I've been Blaine, the fire type gym leader. Hello! Now that the jig is up, Ash and Blaine begin their three on three battle. We begin with Ninetales versus Squirtle. And the battle starts with Ninetales fire spinning and Squirtle using water gun. And I kid you not, Squirtle not only lost the beam clash, but also got smoked by fire spin. As a water type, you just gotta lock in, bro. And look at how he comes out of his shell. Yo! Bro didn't faint, bro. This dude is dead. Next up is Rhydon versus Charizard. You know how this lazy ass lizard be, bro. He looked at this Rhydon like, nigga, how about you ride on this dick? And flew out of the arena and took a nap. Lazy ass. What is a Rhydon doing in a fire type gym anyways? Pikachu sent out next and after struggling with some thunderbolts, for obvious reasons, Ash eventually finds Rhydon's horn as a weak spot and aims for that instead for a critical hit. Blaine then sends out Magmar from not his Pokeball, but from the lava in the arena. Bro was straight swimming in it. That cold ass entrance, bro, the holes are not watching. Speaking of which, has no one deep that if any of Ash's Pokemon get knocked out of the arena, they just straight up melt and die? Where are the regulations? And right on cue, after some back and forth, Magmar hits Pikachu with a fire blast and leaves Bro hanging for his damn life. Shit was so tragic that Ash surrendered the battle. Shit, this is the first one I can't really blame, bro. He sent out a water type and his two strongest mons. A smooth game plan, but a shot just wasn't falling. Before he could challenge for a rematch, Team Rocket decided that Magmar is so different that they need to steal him instead. So they got the smart idea of trying to freeze him. But when that shit doesn't work, obviously, they start panicking and start shooting that shit willy-nilly. Like, look at them! What the fuck is you cooking? The chain reaction of quick freezing all this volcanic rock can result in hella cracks and even an eruption. And look how Team Rocket steady cause all this mess just to bounce. This gotta be the weakest reason to blast off. They just leave behind a fucking eruption? I'm tight! So the lava starts to flow in and Blaine gets Magmar to try and block the crater. They're told only rock types and fire types will be able to withstand the heat. So Ash tries to get Charizard to help, but he just ain't going for it. He said, I'll move crack before I move rocks. Now let me take this nap. Magmar's failed efforts must have inspired, bro or something because he decided to pitch in a little bit eventually and i can't lie they started going crazy everyone starts to pitch in a little bit and they eventually close the gap and ash has the audacity to be like hey since i helped out will i get a volcano badge now man does this look like a damn charity fuck you mean can i get a volcano badge now i'm supposed to reward you because you avoided death for all of us i'm like right someone finally gets it all of these handouts all season no wonder gary got tempted into them shits thankfully ash is granted a rematch instead for a one-on-one -on -one battle on top of the volcano and charizard actually wanted the smoke with magmar so he volunteered to battle instead of Pikachu. Thank God, because on God, bro, would have lost. Like, look how Charizard handles this fire blast. Pikachu just ain't doing that. Plus, the ability to fly above the lava from pillar to pillar and he a fire type is just good looks. Shit ain't all sweet, though, because after a skull bash, Magmar grabs Charizard and nose dives into the lava. If that was Pikachu, he'd be dead. I just convinced Charizard is finished or something, but look at him fly into the sky. Yeah. And look how shocked Blaine is like he really wanted to kill bro. Charizard hits Magma with a seismic toss, flying around around the world, making Bro dizzy before slamming him into the lava. Oh my god! And that, granted Bro is win. I can't lie, this battle was beautiful. Completely overpowered. Badge wasn't handed to him even though he did some acts of service. Charizard went crazy even though he swam in some lava. My only knock is that it took two tries. I'm gonna give this a strong 9 out of 10. And now it's time for the finale. The 8th and final gym badge, ladies and gentlemen. What are we cooking for this one? As Ash is getting ready to enter the Viridian City Gym, who else but Gary Oak shows up with his Ferrari and his cheer squad and basically says, Ash, let me tell you what I'm gonna do right now. I already got 10 badges, but I'm so bored that I'm about to walk into this gym that you're about to face and beat it just because I'm that dude. And then he cuts in front of him and walks in. Gary Oak walks in and is met with none other than Giovanni for the 3v3 gym battle. Gary sends out Nido King and Arcanine to deal with Giovanni's golem and king very easily. Gary starts to get cocky, like, hey, ain't you supposed to be the Pablo Esquire of this region? How the hell are you losing this bad? With your trash ass. And and Giovanni responded to this in possibly the most gangster way possible. He stands up, ushered for a secret door to be opened, and reveals his third Pokemon to be released. An armored Mewtwo. Mind you, no one knows what this thing is other than Giovanni. I covered this story in depth, but unfortunately it's no longer with us. But anyways, Mewtwo obviously deals with all of Gary's Pokemon so dominantly that it leaves him whimpering. Yuck! Now I'm thinking, okay, how will this work for Ash? Cause God knows he ain't beating no damn Mewtwo. I'm thinking, okay, maybe if Charizard put some respect on him, Pikachu might be able to short circuit the suit. Shit, Hunter might have to leave the Chappelle show and get back in the lab. But all those tactics ain't mean shit. Cause oh, conveniently, Giovanni got an emergency call and somehow needs Mewtwo to deal with it. What could the threat have been? Thanos? So who does he leave behind to hold down the gym for Ash's battle? To protect the world from devastation. Get the fuck out of here, bro. Hell nah, bro. Y'all 
bullshit in. Y'all done let the worst guards of all time protect the Earth Badge? What is this? Ash is already 50 and 0 against these idiots. They don't even know what they're doing, sending out all three Pokemon at once. Look at them trying to be slick too by connecting damage from the battle to an electrical shock system. These dumbasses did it on both sides. Look! And as soon as Ash gets the upper hand, they send out two more of their own Pokemon. This is a 5v3 now, and Ash still whoops them so bad that they blast off and drop the badge. Oh my god, bro. I don't even know what to give this sad excuse of a gym battle. No Giovanni, no Mewtwo, no Sauce, no Threat. He did win a 5v3, but it was Team Rock. You know what? I'm feeling generous. I'm gonna give it a 3 out of 10. As for Mickey, hell yes, it was Mickey Mouse. Both ears, brother. Mickey Mouse. Uh, Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Yes, bro. That's me. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Every Ashes Gym Battle performance rated. If you like what you saw, make sure you subscribe and leave a comment down below with your thoughts or vote on the community poll on what you want to see next. Thank you all for watching. I'm gonna catch y'all in the next video. Peace. I hate a privileged rapper who don't even know what it takes. The diamonds they hit like a rainbow, that's cause a necklace of frame.